Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel, I'm Bushka, and today we're going to be talking about a, uh, a few replays, a few replays that were sent in by you subscribers, replay analysis. Uh, this is a ratings game, actually, Help on the Bug, who is a long-time contributor to the channel and has been featured quite a few times on here, is uh, going to run us through in the VK100 01P, L or R. Because it's a rating game, you can expect to see some very different styles of gameplay. People play to win in these games, generally. Well, look, they do their best. Uh, and you're going to see immediately caps are important. There is going to be a, I think it's a Tiger 2, pumps into the cap here. I've only watched like the first minute of this game. And Help of a Bug is in a tank that did get nerfed, uh, the patch after it got released, because let's be honest, the 101 p when it was first released into the wild, well, that's pretty freaking funny. There we go. 30 seconds on the cap and on the clock and the cap is already ticking forward. Now, let's stop it just here for one second and have a look at that mini map down the bottom. And you will note that despite this being a ratings game and cap being the only thing that counts, the rest of the team has decided that cap is for the reds and the flank is for the greens. Now, this could still work out. Let's see what happens. But Help of Mabug is very much uh, up against it here. He's holding against multiple targets. There's a Tiger 2 on the left. Uh, you can see there is actually a lot of red action in town. And there's nothing spotted on the flank. But to their credit, the team isn't loitering on the flank. They want to win this one too. And the light and the medium are pumping through into the red spawn already. Now there is the... And already, look at this. Tell me in a standard public game where this would have happened. There has been a minute through, there is two tanks in the spawn uh, from Help of a Bug's team. And after being completely alone and isolated in town with the entire red team, he's got a P43 and a WZ111 already in town supporting him. Just goes to show, ratings. It's a lot more fun than, uh, yeah, if only they did it during the day. Asia time so I could actually play it. Anyway, long story short, this is settling in for quite an interesting matchup. That Tiger 2 is doing the right thing. He's only showing his upper glacis, uh, but they've more or less moved away from the strat of capping this one out. They're moving backwards and forwards in that. Help of a is holding the left flank hard, and this Progetto makes a very aggressive move. move. This is a Probably a, not a great move against a tank like this. This is not the kind of tank you want to run into in a Progetto, but at the same time, this P43 TR, who's called Cannon Fodder, is doing everything he can to live up to his name. There's no reason to go that far outside the circle. Help of a bug hits a 700 Alpha HE shot inside of that Panther M10, which used to be my favorite credit grinding tank in Tier 7. And long, long time ago. We're talking like five, six years ago. And things are starting to go real tough here. Again, this is not the push that that Progetto wants. I mean, this this is not the kind of... Because even if you're getting those shots in, even if you're getting those shots in, you're only making even trades with a tank that's got nearly 2,000 hit points. And sometimes not even that, that kind of a trade. And now you've left what is a... Very easy kill over here. And the chances of this M10 penning with a 75mm low pen premium tank gun got very, very good. So Help of the Bug has done a brilliant job on the flank here. Cannon Fodder did his best to come and help. Unfortunately, got pushed away. And look at this. This is great heavy tank play. Uh, he set himself up so that he can angle to all the targets that are in front of him. And everyone left on the red team is currently spotted on the minimap. Uh, you can see that things are chaotic in town, but Help on the Bug now has over a thousand hit points, over 1100 hit points, in fact, and is in front of all the main protagonists. Now he's losing tanks, but see, he was aware of where that Emil was and he was angled to the Emil the entire time. And the Emil's probably taken too long to get involved here. And he, well, I would suggest he's shooting at the wrong target. As much as we all hate the Smasher, <laughs> the Smasher is going to struggle to do much to the Emil uh, in a 1v1. Whereas the Emil's going to absolutely terminate the Smasher. 
The real problem here for the red team is this big booty German prince, Kelper Mabug, who is slowly rumbling down this flank. Now, the Bavarian Bulldog could do a good thing here if he stays alive and doesn't bleed. What do you think is going to happen, though? I mean, do you think he's going to stay alive or do you think he's going to bleed? <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, because when you've got a heavy tank like this, the light tank can actually... Oh, that's a heartbreaking track for him. But then two big bounces. Tiger's got the 310 alpha gun. So it's a 105. Uh, this is going to be very, very interesting. And the Bulldog is still alive. Now, that means that he can actually just stay at the back and hopefully farm or keep tanks unable to take aggressive positions against help on the bug just by being alive. I don't want him to move forward if I'm helping the bug. But he is. He's moving forward and he does get the clear. Okay. Call me crazy. He's doing the right thing. Look at all that side arm of it. Right through the drive wheel is where we're going to go. Now, this is going to be exciting. Because 4.3k in and this Emil has more than enough uh, good stuff to do the business. He can pen help him a bug. He's got a lot of burst damage. And he's got enough armor if he can get it in the right position. But he's not in the right position. He's really not in the right position right about now. And the Bulldog is doing the right thing. HE shot, massive numbers. That's a really good drive. And a really interesting drive too in a ratings game. 5.5k made 193,000 credits in the VK. So you're thinking that's a, uh, a birthday time event. Uh, and just an all-round lovely drive from a bloke who's done a lot of good all-round driving on the channel. Now, I haven't watched these games before, so I'm going to be calling them live. The AE Phase 1 on Fort Despair from Tubiz99. Let's roll it up and see what happens. Now, the Phase is a interesting tank. I see this a lot more in PC than I see it in Blitz. In PC, this is one of the reward tanks you can choose uh, for the Battle Pass. Well, PC's equivalent of the Battle Pass. And it's... I feel a lot stronger in PC than it is in Blitz. But a good gun, a good turret, and good gun depression. Those are things that you can really take advantage of in the PC game. In my opinion, a lot easier than you can in Blitz. Especially on a map like this, which is a flat map. But if we look at the teams... There's a Conqueror, a 103, and a Defender Mark 1. Now, they are all variants on a hull-down, gun-depression model of a tank. Um, so, there really isn't anyone here who is going to bring something to the fore that the Bays can't deal with. They're all... all and that Conqueror just hit him for 190. Now... I reckon Chubiz knows what the hell he's doing. And he's seen a Conqueror hitting for 190 and said, Oh, hello, you've got the Carnarvon stock gun. I'll be uh, pretty comfortable angling to you. And the M103 is probably a more important target. Not only has the, Carnarvon, the Conqueror got the Carnarvon stock gun, <laughs> he's also made the fatal error of believing that he is a side-scraping tank and has tried to angle to multiple opposition heavies and then come out sideways. Yeah, Chubiz was never going to miss that mark and made sure that he also got the cap as well. So both experienced and enjoys winning. Uh, something that a lot of people are not good at. Much better angle here for uh, Chubiz. And he's really making the most out of every single little bit of undulation and permutation in the ground. Going for drive wheel shots, 500 max roll, lovely stuff. And the green team is on the pump here just as well because they've lost three amigos on the flank so they've carried the heavy route and the uh red team have carried the medium route let's see how this shapes up now this is not a good idea from the defender mark one this again is a variation on the theme of a hull down turreted tank and it's not really a variation on the theme that works very well now you can see there are some internet issues going on here for tubiz but he doesn't care. He's just going to use his skills and abilities to absolutely dominate and devastate. And this is a great example of a good tanker taking advantage of what matchmaking throws his way. 
if you had have been in a uh, a tank like this and you had have been up against, say, a bunch of T9 Soviet heavies like an ST1 uh, or even, say, a E75, you might not have been able to get things done on the flank the way that Tubiz could. And he's been switching to HE, using whatever he can to get hull down, and now he's going to go and take his big-ass hit point pool and bully someone over here. Now, he's seen the T92E1 has just fired into the side of the VK, so he knows he's safe from the 92E1 for a short while, and he's taking off a position where he's got both hard cover and soft cover over here on the flank. Now, C just got capped. Okay, and his Amigo is chasing through there. So he's on his own out here for the Object 704, and he's got plenty of hit points left. The 704 has made the fatal error of trying to reposition when he's the only person left on his team and is in a non-turreted TD. This is a dangerous, dangerous idea at best. And our Amigo here, Chubis, can now just take his time and rip the 704 apart, who seems to be struggling uh, tremendously. And there you go. A nice, easy 4.8k game uh, that I actually really like that drive. That's a, a nice a nice game where you see a tank that has an opportunity ram at home. Uh, and this is something a lot of times you see people make the mistake in Blitz of not reading the team list and ending up in situations where they just don't do the business. Let's have a look at this T-34 and 3 game on New Bay. Now, this is a, an exciting one because this is actually an up-tiered game. This is the first game we've seen today where the 34 and 3 is bottom tier. And this is Nick Pro 32 from the BCATS clan. Uh, looking at this team list, Yag Tiger and a Mouse Chin. Uh, moist Chin. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know here. Um, he doesn't want to take those on, obviously, frontally, but he's in a really strong tank for this contest up here. And I... I don't think they've pushed hard in here. But this is a pretty popular area for a Chinese medium um, with this kind of turret. Everything from a, a Type 59 to a WZ-121 or a 121B would love this. Um, even though that scent has a strong turret when it's hull down, when it's underneath, this is something a lot of people don't realize about the scent, is it's got a very, very soft roof and there's actually quite a thick section of the scent's roof that is visible when it's underneath you. If it's above you using its 10 degrees of gun depression, it can do all kinds of things. Now, I love this as a move. This is a very interesting move because what a lot of people will do in a tank like this is roll forward blindly uh, just across to the bridge and get chewed up from the flank. If you take your time, you can still get your shots, but you can make sure that those shots are actually not going to get you hit off for that just absolutely draining every last inch of gun depression out of this Chinese medium. And then hitting the adrenaline booster. Nice. Can't quite get there. Whoa! Poor situational awareness from Koishi Komi. And there's a 54 lightweight. No. Nope. This is obviously a tank with a big ass alpha cannon on it. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of chat going on for the red team, and he's grounded under on the flank here. Already done 1,300 damage and played very straightforward tactical game. But look at where he is now. He's this is brilliant. This is a this is a wonderful drive, an absolutely wonderful drive. And using the HE shell there on the back of that 50 millimeter uh, buttock, lovely. Here comes some tanks turning around. And this is the long reload on that high upper dose. Happy to take a hit from the uh, AT-15 to clear. And now he's going into a side scrape and angle. Over angling there just slightly. But the 15 isn't going to keep... He's, he is he's going to keep watching him. Oh, that was a poor shot from the 15. Straight to the heat. Can't muck around with those kind of things. That's a fast firing gun, that AT-15. And things have actually gone a little bit to hell in a handbasket here. They were up by a couple of tanks, and they're now just even Stevens. Long reload on this tank. It's a lot more like a heavy tank when you're in these kind of situations than it is like a medium tank, but it's got quite good mobility, and that 15, 
yeah, he was always going to have to turn back around. Straight to the heat, do the business, get get a nice shot, nice angle. Back to three on three. Back to three on two. And unfortunately, both the tier nine. Oh, now, can you Kolobodovsky? <laughs> both the tier nines left, which is not an ideal situation. But that 54 lightweight, while he did get one in, uh, let our amigo know exactly where he was. So Nick Pro knows that at least one of them is going to be in the cap. And I like this as a move. Because they've jumped out of the cap, so he's putting some distance between himself and the bad guys. He's got 100 cap points to get around there and do things. So he's got over a minute left before things go south, unless there's more than one in the cap. And that's a good thing too. So the 54 lightweight, this is the kind of avenue he'd be going if he's being aggressive. He'd be going up here. There he is. That's exactly what I would have done. Good trades. And now the Yag Tiger. Now, this is an interesting one because the Yag Tiger, the mouth, the moisture just said GG. Bad move, buddy. The Yag Tiger is not very good against medium tanks. Now, obviously, the Yag can one shot him. But if he can drag the Yag Tiger close enough down here, he can easily leave the Yag in the dust. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to leave the Yag in the dust. And either try to 1v1 him by getting on his side, or get past him and run back and reset the cat. Brilliant work. Really lovely stuff. He's got 60 seconds gone on the cap, or 60 points gone on the cap. And the Yags made a big error here. He started driving and turning. No, he's going to have to leave him alone and go to the cap. He doesn't have any choice. If he doesn't go to the cap, the moisture's going to go and uh, just finish this one off. Now, how he does this is going to be a tough one. He's got to load the heat, I'd say. Or is he just going to stay with AP? He's going to stay with AP. Now, he's gone to HE. Excellent. Eight seconds left on the cap. He needs a bounce. He needs a bounce. He needs a bounce. He needs a bounce. Come on, buddy. Oh, it just damages the track. Big mistakes. Big mistakes were made. Now, the Yag Tiger's too slow. Okay. And this Moistgen is actually now shielding our Amigo from the highest DPM German gun going around. Oh, you should never have said GG's, my friend. As your very, very slow and slightly damaged tank continues to shield my friend from his nemesis, the Yag Tiger. And that was kind of embarrassing, Mr. Captain Noodle. Um, yeah, I don't know what you were thinking, my friend. Now, he's actually got a chance here, but he needs to draw a shot out of this Yag Tiger. He's trying to angle up. I like this a lot. The Yag Tiger wants to win. If I was the Yag, I would have been more patient than this. This is a... This is... Oh, this is very interesting. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Get a tracking shot. Tracking shot. No, just goes for a shot. Just goes for a basic, pure roll shot. 30 seconds left. It's going to take him two shots to hit unless he max rolls. So he's got to... Oh, Yag, that was a mistake. And now he's got to get to his side. Come on. Side shots are the best shots. Oh, so close. Six kills. Really good drive, but he had no options left if he wanted to win that. Four and a half K mastery in defeat. The real problem he had there was time was against him. Uh, oh, that Yag Tiger was just a two shot instead of a one shot. If he had been a one shot, he could have taken a little more time. But the reload on that 34 and 3, really good drive on the 34 and 3 though. Really good drive. Very, very interesting. Let's go and have a look now at the TVP 5051 Instigator on Oasis Palms. And this is the last cheese ball. Uh, each tank has a light tank on its team, but the red team has two mediums uh, and only two heavy. So you'd expect to see some real aggressive gameplay out here on the flank from the medium tanks and the red team. They've got an extra tank who can get out here super quick. And in fact, the last cheese ball is a little bit behind the hammer here too, because you always have to wait for this thing, the TV uh, P, to actually reload. Now he's looked at the team, um, and he has decided that, yeah, 
There's nothing spotted in town. The T40, the T92E1 hasn't spotted anything either. He is going to go and roll in behind this cap here and try and keep the red tank spotted. This is a pretty ballsy move. Now, he does have at least two, possibly three tanks within shouting distance of him who will get involved. No, they're leaving. They're leaving. Well, the 92E1 is coming back. I'm just watching the minimap at the bottom of the screen. The 92E1 is coming back to the one spot, and so are the two TDs, I believe. So, Amigo, just trying to hold here in the flank. A lot of maps, this wouldn't work. Um, the, the teams would be very, very aggressive. But everyone knows that this is a map that oftentimes has enormous big-ass TDs camping the spawn. So, you can get this kind of disjointed gameplay where the team rolls in in dribs and drabs and ones and twos. And once someone gets hit by like a grill or a waffle um, and loses 640 hit points, they really go quiet and don't budge. And tanks like that Leopard 1, uh, yeah, that can be very scary to be peeking corners in a Leopard 1 when you're going to possibly get spotted at any moment by the TVP, TVP. And the red team is making this easy because they are pushing uh, and they're allowing the green team to slowly encircle this flank. Now that doesn't mean that things can't go badly because you can just see that the 57 Heavy just went down. He must have come out and exposed himself just a little bit too much. And here comes the E1 on a full reload, mind you. That's 2300 assisted damage already. Now this is a lot... Oh, wow. That was a really, really expensive shot to put into our Amigo and the TVP for that 92E1. Ravash was a little bit rarash. Uh, and now we're looking at what is a great example of a slow disintegration. 2,000 damage for the last cheese ball and 3.6k, 3.7k assisted damage on the flank. This is what some simple, fundamentally good tanking can bring about in a game. I am really happy that he sent this game in because I appreciate you, my friend. And after saving all his hit points, he can now go and do bad things to good people with one of the most devastating auto loaders we've ever seen in Blitz. He's got one shot left. He's just waiting, lining it up. Thanks very much. As he moves up to 3,000 damage himself. And, uh,. Yeah, that was an absolute clinic on how to do big damages and help the team win. Um, patrol duty, uh, help your team damage at least three enemy vehicles by spotting them. Uh, and obviously then scout as well, detect at least five enemy vehicles. Uh, lots of ribbons, damage with your assistance, legendary, uh, at least 70%. And this is the big one. Um... What's this one? Damage dealt. Nicely done. Nicely done. And then your standard blue ribbons. Just, you know, enemy destroyed three tanks and knockdowning. That was a really good game. That was a really good game. 4.345k spotting damage. Righto, let's have a look at this one. This is an object 263 game from American Warwolf in the 263. A tank that got buffed in the last patch. And uh, hopefully this is an interesting one. I had an E50M replay lined up that looked really, really good, but it was uh, a bit glitchy and it wasn't working. So I I apologize for that. Um, what can I do? Not much. Uh, 263 is a tank that I haven't loved since they patched it because they screwed with the gun. Um, I don't like what they did to the gun. The, the whole thing for the tank was always to drive it as a YOLO wagon for me, but also the fact that the gun was very accurate made the tank work. This gun now is just arse. Uh, they've really hurt the gun. And in a tank that is a fixed track tank, uh, as a non-turreted tank, sorry, 
uh, and has a very narrow arc for gun traverse, that means your gun is, the circle is moving around a lot when you're driving. And having a, a less accurate gun, in dispersion terms, really hurts it. Matchmaking's not uh, terrible though. He's the only TD, which means he's going to have a lot of targets moving forward in front of him. If he does want to just chill at the back a little and he can bring to bear an absolute arseload of deep DPM. The deeps on this tank are legitimately scary. Big, big deeps. Uh, and he's also still very mobile. Taking a, an inside line here, this is the kind of thing that Wargaming like on their maps. They, they will build a heavy line and a medium line, and they kind of add an inside line to both through the middle of the map. So you'll have one, and then a, a, a route on the inside that makes challenging uh, gameplay a thing. Choices that have to be made and angles that have to be kept. You think like this, you think like Rockfield, there's a heavy route, but then there's a medium inside line just towards it. There's a medium route, but there's, you know, you, you know what I'm saying. Let's just have a look at the minimap here. I'll bring it up. Um, you can see what I like about this is he's realized that if you look down the bottom left corner, there is a light tank from this team already, the Sheridan, in the red spawn at the two slot. And there is a 62A Fearless just in front of him here. He also has cover on the right. And there may be another unspotted tank somewhere between the Sheridan and the 62A. But whatever happens, he can angle up towards one or the other without really being a high pen proposition, um, which is important. See what I'm talking about with that aim time? Look at the aim time on this gun. Like, it, it moves around a lot, and that happens all the time. And here we go. So, he's got fields of fire in multiple different areas. Now, this 57 Heavy has to be smart, and he has to get out of the way, or it's going to be very difficult for our Amigo to hit these shots. So, he's got to move. He's straight up had to give away his position. The 57 Heavy is playing this kind of... Well, you can see why he's doing what he's doing. Because there was multiple angles he was dealing with there. And that's unfortunate, but, you know, it's one of those things. Everything happens uh, according to plan until someone gets punched in the face. And then things just kind of go haywire. Here's the uh, Grand Wagen we couldn't deal with before. And we remain completely unable to deal with now. Because it's got a turret made of tomato red steel. So what is it? Swedish steel. Things looking okay for the team though. There's still one tank up. That Sheridan needs to get get his ass out of there. That's look at the okay. Look at this hit point pool. That like, Krenvaga may be on fire, but the uh, Pincer Kid in the 62A uh, right and Kimchin in the Sheridan, they are both one shots. Um, let's see how this rolls out. In fact. The green team is up by a tank uh, as Samuel Estrada goes down, but the Kranwagen over here has 36 hit points. So there are some big ass tanks to get through on the red team just now. And uh, American Warwolf is repositioning. Now I like this as a reposition because he's putting the tanks in here into different angles again. And he's setting up for the shot, the side of the Yo. There it is. Oh, it's not the Yo, sorry, the Kranwagen. Krenvagen, Hagen, Dagen. And there we go. All those low hit point tanks have just been tidied up. And now things are looking very dim indeed. However, that position is perfect. And the Fosh is not turreted. So he's trying to angle to multiple different tanks at the moment as well. And uh, American Warwolf is doing a good job side scraping here. The Sheridan is telling him to go. Which I don't think is the OMFG. I don't really think that's the right call. He's got a lot more deeps than these two in terms of reload speed. Report 263. God, give me a break. And he's doing the right thing here. His reload is super quick, like six seconds. So he's going to give himself a chance of clearing targets here. Very comfortable. There's one, there's two. Big bounce, big bounce. That's 680. That's a heat round. That's about four bazillion penetration. Yeah, Sheridan doesn't know what he's talking about. Um... This is a very good drive. Look at the angles. He's going to try and get past him. Whoa, that is ballsy. Needs to hit a tracking shot here. Good. 
Good angling, good angling, good angling. Keep moving that gun around. Keep moving that gun around. Oh, this tank is such a prick of a tank to deal with. Such a prick of a tank to deal with here. Uh, and I've I've been the guy, both in the Jaegeru and the guy. Oh, this Sheridan, don't face hug. Just give it a rest, mate. He's done bloody well. Excellent, excellent drive, excellent drive. Right at the end there. I want to talk you through this. I've been that guy in both the Jaegeru and in the 263. This is a tank that is at its best, literally when it's right in front of you and it's moving around all square, awkward angles and a, a gunman that looks like you can pen it really easily and then you can't and then you can. And a tank that just keeps spitting out big-ass doses every six seconds or what, I think it's 5.5 or something. Uh, so, I mean, there was certainly flaws there with the some of the shots and some of the damage taken but that's kind of what you want to be doing with this tank um when you set yourself up for people to come around a corner to this tank they don't really realize what they're walking into it's an absolute shitstorm. uh let's see is there anything left that i got to look at here stb1 no 263 no uh I think that's about it. Um, hmm. Yep, that's it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that that little run through. Uh, we're going to be doing this more. Send your replays into bushkagaming at gmail.com uh, and we'll do more replay analysis. I can sit here for a couple of hours and do them. If you like doing them and talking through them, um, you know, let's see. Uh, bye for now. Subscribe, etc.